Today we are going to scan this and I am going to be putting it up for free as an STL file where you can download it and print it out yourself. On the screen I have my scanning, I'm going to put it on maybe high frame rate and then I am going to click on maybe brightness increase and we're going to hit scan. It's already kind of say, set up as the tabletop so it should be fairly easy and I am holding the the scanner a little bit further away from the sculpture. So this will be kind of cool because this helps out a lot of sculptors and artists alike. So just scan it really quickly. And this is kind of expensive. I bought this a long time ago from I believe Sculpture House. And I am in the process of just scanning in all my stuff. Because this is white, it scans really well. I'm sure there's going to be some mods I'll have to do, but one thing I want to do is scan, scan this in, but I also want to modify it and add some detail. I would love to have the names of the muscles also added. Sometimes you have to kind of get from the top down just to get more detail out of the sculpture. I don't know why it keeps printing or scanning in such a different like direction than what it is. So it's scanning a little bit of the head. I am just gonna keep moving up and I'm gonna rotate the model myself. And then I'm gonna come back where I was and just kind of do this again. So slowly get the rest of it. Make sure that you get the other leg, the muscle groups on the inside of the toe. It, it's that easy to scan. It's kind of like an unbelievable little, little machine here. Oh no. The light did something. I have my light in such a way that it's making it just a little bit harder. All right, I'm going to move this. I'm just gonna move it up to the head, get some more details in the neck here, and then I'm just gonna take this and move it. If it loses tracking, just go back to where you were and move slower. I'm going to move it. So after you scan this, you're going to get this. This is the ecroche. It looks pretty good. No multiple feet as you can tell over there. And it looks pretty good. But if you zoom in, there's some imperfections here and there. All you have to do is hit process, the scan, and then it's going to take you to another page. In this page, you're going to hit next, and then it's going to work through this. It's going to repair some things, simplify. Uh, it's going to fill in some of the holes, and you'll have a solid 3D object. And we're done. We should be able to look around this, make sure I don't have any lost detail. It looks pretty good. So the next step 
is to take this into Blender. Now with the object open, zoom out, and you can move around and look at your object. These objects here on this side, you can pan, rotate. You might want to come in here and then go into sculpt mode. And then when using one of these tools, this is the draw and the draw sharp. So using the draw, I like to put it on minus. Then you're going to have to play around with the radius. And if you wanted to define maybe the clavicle a little bit, you can do that. So it'll take you some time. So this is the acromion process. Maybe increase the strength a little bit and try and indicate that. This way, when it prints, you should be able to tell what is happening. Replica came out pretty well, but the casts themselves are not as good as the original. So I wanted to include a little bit more detail. So do what you want with the scans and eventually I'll make a print of this. So I've set, <clears throat> so I've set my ecroche. I'm going to place them into my base here. And now you can tell it fits in. I could even make them a little bit bigger if I wanted. There we go. That's not going to fit. When it turns this color, that means it doesn't fit. So just make them a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. And now, if you're happy with this in the printing area, you set your settings. I'll go through it. Dynamic quality, super quality. The better the quality, the longer it takes. Standard quality, low quality. Then you have walls, that's the thickness of the wall, top to bottom, top thickness, bottom thickness. The infill, that's the, the inside, the density infill of the print. Material, printing temperature, this is kind of important. I usually set it at 200 and at 90. You could also adjust it while it's printing. And print speed, I leave it pretty low at 45. I just want to make sure I get accurate results. The travel enable retraction. So when it puts like a little bead of plastic, it kind of lifts up and moves it. That way it doesn't get like all of these little hair type of things happening. The cooling support. This is uh, something you're going to be playing a lot with this. Support is going to put it like around the neck the arm, it'll kind of build it all up if you put it everywhere. Now, if you just put it touching the build plate, it's really just going to make stuff here, but it, not, it might not be able to like print the legs because they have to come out. So that's the reason you want to probably put everywhere. I'm learning about this. I'm not a I'm not perfect with this, but it seems to be the best thing. The build plate adhesion I've, the raft is usually what I add because it gives me a little bit more support. Before then, I was getting a lot of lifting from the print. And if you keep it in raft, it's a lot easier. You waste a little bit more plastic. It puts a, a thicker layer underneath, but I find that that's kind of important. And then all you do is click slice, and it'll take a while to calculate all of this and then build a G-code file that you can directly import into your printer. For my printer, I have to do an SD card, bring it in, and then print it. But the interesting thing is that it calculates, adds all the support that it needs, and it'll be ready for the printer. So we're going to see how long it, this is going to take. And it's going to take one day, 10 hours, 52 minutes, 174 grams of plastic. Let me show you what a G-code looks like. When you open up the G-code, and this is a two-part echo shape because I wanted to print it larger than my printable area, this is what it looks like. It's really fascinating because you visualize, you can see exactly how it's going to print the support. So it's parsing the G-code. It's going to take a while. It's pretty interesting. So this red is the object it's uh this is very slow even on this computer that's pretty fast and this is the support 
this is where it's going to print all of that support this is going to support the head the hands everything is being printed in such a way visually that you can understand but this is what the G code is. This is going to take, I think, four days to print. But that's it. That's how you take the scan to the mesh mixer, to Blender, and then off to Cura to print. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.